Starship 15 is poised to launch next week and is taking a special passenger along for the ride. Starlink avoids a collision with a competitor. Falcon Heavy gets another contract. Crew Dragon prepares to take the next astronauts to space on Thursday. And we finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. Monday kicked off a series of stress tests for Starship Serial Number 15 at the Starbase Launch Facility in South Texas. Filling her tanks up with liquid nitrogen and simulating Raptor engine thrust by ramming metal shafts up her skirt against her lower puck dome. And in a promiscuous fashion, the evening's activities were repeated the following night. It all must have went well because on Wednesday, the hydraulic rams were removed from the stand and cryo tests progressed onto the header tanks. Then on Thursday, its three Raptor engines arrived on site for installation. Serial numbers 54, 61, and 66. The 69th Raptor engine is coming soon. A static fire is currently scheduled for Monday, and Elon says they are aiming to launch next week. I think we're all in agreement that Tuesday would be his first choice. Again, this rocket is the first of a new series of Starships, ending with SN19. SN16 has been spotted with twice as many heat shield tiles mechanically attached to its belly. SpaceX is working on perfecting their strategy before their first orbital flight, expected to be with SN20. To get to orbit, a super heavy booster will be required, and SpaceX has begun dismantling their first Pathfinder prototype, BN1. Not to worry though, BN2 will be the first to fly, and it, along with BN3, are currently under construction, as is the orbital launch site from which they will lift off, the integration launch tower growing taller every week. SpaceX President Gwen Shotwell said in a recent interview during Satellite 2021 that she believes SpaceX will be flying large numbers of people on Starship in five years including point-to-point -point travel between locations on Earth. But let's return to SN15 for a minute. Carter Good captured an image of what appears to be a white dish embedded into the hull of the rocket. Well, it turns out it's a Starlink terminal. SpaceX has submitted a request for special temporary authority with the FAA to use Starlink services during future test flights. Operations will only occur within five kilometers of Boca Chica, not to exceed 12 and a half clicks in altitude, and a max duration of eight minutes. Since both the Starship and Starlink programs are in their test phase, it's hard to say which one they are trying to test out here. So we'll just go with both. We know SpaceX has been experimenting with Starlink service for transportation purposes, and that Starship could always use a steady stream of 4K video on board. Starlink did avoid a major catastrophe a couple weeks ago. The Verge reported that a OneWeb satellite launched on March 30th aboard a Russian Soyuz, along with 35 other OneWeb satellites, was on a possible collision trajectory with one of SpaceX's own Constellation sats. Five days after launch, the U.S. Space Force alerted OneWeb of the situation that there existed a 1.3% chance a collision would take place, with the two spacecraft coming as close as 190 feet from each other. So OneWeb got in touch with SpaceX, and the two companies decided to switch off the Starlink satellite's autonomous maneuvering system and opt to have OneWeb adjust course for theirs. Starlink operates at lower orbital altitudes than OneWeb, so the latter was just passing through. During the same Satellite 2021 interview mentioned earlier, President Shotwell said after five more flock deployments of their Starlink spacecraft, her team anticipates the ability to provide the world with consistent global connectivity later this year. SpaceX currently has about 1,320 satellites operating in orbit and plans on launching more flocks into polar orbit from Vandenberg Air Force Base this summer. And by the end of summer, Elon thinks Starlink could be out of beta. Service uptime, bandwidth, and latency are improving rapidly. Moving on to more SpaceX news meow, SpaceX amended their filing with the U.S. Secretaries and Exchange Commission this week to reflect an additional $300 plus million they raised by private investors since February, placing the total raise up to 1.164 billion coins. As expected, Farron Catching Ship Number Dose, Miss Chief, or Mischief, has followed the same fate as Miss Tree and been relieved of her duties. Greg Scott was there at the Florida port to wave her off, but the bitter old boat wasn't having it. She tried to spray back the paparazzi on her way out. Don't make me get the hose! The next Falcon Heavy launch isn't expected to lift off until at least July of 2021, but the heavy lift rocket was just awarded another mission for late 2023. It will be taking Astrobotics Griffin Lunar Lander to the moon, where NASA's Viper rover will disembark to explore the South Pole. But the next big event on SpaceX's calendar, save maybe a Starship launch, is Crew Dragon. The crew of Crew 2 is targeting next Thursday, April 22nd, for their launch upon a Falcon 9 rocket. Their Dragon capsule, Endeavour, arrived at the Cape this week for integration with the booster. Endeavour is the very same capsule that took Bob and Doug to space last year, save for some improvements, including a new paint job. You know, personally, I like the toasty marshmallow look. 
and the booster is a hand-me-down too. The second stage being the only new segment, so score one for the taxpayers. Those savings can now be wasted elsewhere. And now it's time for today's honorable mention. Blue Origin is counting down the days until they can put Joy Riders into suborbital space. On Wednesday, their new Shepard rocket was on the pad for their 15th mission, and Team Blue practiced capsule ingress with some of their employees while the rocket was on the pad and fueled to simulate a real crewed mission. Then they egressed out so their rocket could lift off with its one remaining passenger on board, Mannequin Skywalker. who you assume just didn't appreciate the ride like you and I would have. He's kind of a jerk. The booster, coming in hot, landed successfully on the pad. Landing here deployed. Oh, look at that smooth landing. And Blue provided us with that sweet shoot footage, brah. Oh, yeah. The capsule then making a soft touchdown using its retro rocket in the West Texas desert. Shortly after, Cowboy Jeffy took to Instagram to inform everyone it's time. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for tuning in. And thank you eccentric members and patrons for your monetary love. Do have a nominal weekend. And until next time, Godspeed. Godspeed.